In the last lesson, we stored our API key in a config file and we were able to successfully retrieve data from the YouTube API. If you missed that lesson, check out the playlist right over here. So the first step is to fill out the properties of our data models according to the response that we get from the YouTube data API. So let's take a look again at Proxyman. And this tool is really helpful, um, especially because you can just send the request and look at the response and get this tree view. And then you can kind of go through it like this. Um, sometimes the documentation will have the response. So this is the YouTube data API. I know the API Explorer, if you use this and you try out the request, you're going to be able to see the response. So here, this kind of gives you an idea. Yeah. So if you don't want to use Proxyman to look at it, you can look at this as well. So this would be the playlist uh, object or instance, and this would be the items, right? And each item is a video. If you click on that, you can see these are the properties of the uh, of the video. Actually, let's use this because the text is bigger than we have here in Proxyman. We're going to start with the video itself. So we're going to add the decodable protocol. And this allows us to turn the JSON data into instances of video uh, using JSON uh, decoder. So let's bring up the API documentation. So what I'm looking at right now is a single video. So we can see that it has an ID, which is a string. And this will be helpful for us because uh, we want to put these video instances inside a Swift UI list, and it needs to be able to identify between different videos. So we are going to pick and choose the properties that we want to <laughs> we want to parse essentially. So there's going to be a uh, string ID. Okay, and then there is going to be a snippet. And inside is going to be a title. It's going to be a description, both of these we need and those are strings. And then there's also going to be thumbnails. Let's first focus on title and description. So again, this is a snippet property and the snippet itself, you can see these curly brackets, right? That represents a different um, instance or struct or object, or whatever you want to call it. All of it is uh, representing the same thing. So we're going to say snippet is going to be could be a type of snippet. And I'm going to make this optional in case it doesn't exist. Right? Yeah, snippet and not snippets. I can make sure that the property is the same. And I'm going to create another struct in here called snippet. And it too is going to be decodable. So inside the snippet is where I would put title and description. Okay, so these I mean, all videos should have a title and description, right? But just in case they don't, you can make them optional. For now, I won't. Let's just see what happens. And then inside the snippet, we have thumbnails. What else do we need here? Uh, we need the, the video ID. Let's deal with that before thumbnails because there's quite a bit in here with thumbnails. So let's do resource ID. I'm going to spell it with a lowercase r like this. Um, let's do that. So then here I'm going to create another struct called resource ID that is decodable. And the resource ID has, well, the only one I'm really interested in is video ID and it's a string. And I know that all videos must have a video ID. Okay. So let's deal with thumbnails. Was it thumbnails with an S? This was inside the snippet. So thumbnails with an S, yeah. And then this itself is its own thing. So we have to define that. Now let's call this thumbnails. So let's create another struct called thumbnails. And this is going to be decodable as well. And what do I need in here? key. Uh, let's take a look at proxy man here to look at a real response. Uh, we've got the snippet here. And then we've got the snippet uh, thumbnails right here. Let's open this up. 
and then there are several different ones standard medium default high max res so you can try out these different ones these are all different uh, file sizes you you probably wouldn't want to get this one like this is the biggest one unless you're showing it on an iPad maybe or you want it super clear when I was building my demo I was pretty happy with medium so that's what I'm gonna go with actually medium is almost the smallest one default is is pretty small so this is double almost double that size but uh, I remember why I chose medium is because the aspect ratio is different so you can see that um, these are about yeah the aspect ratio was a little different some of these look more square and some of them look more like a widescreen type of thing so I figured out like after trying them out that medium was the one that displayed nicely so that's what I chose um, yeah so I'm gonna say var medium and what's the type so the type itself is another object so I'm gonna to have to create you know something for that just to house these three properties this one is a string uh, this one is an int and this one is an int as well so let's create a struct thumbnail size this is decodable to what is it URL Is it like that? Height? Yeah, okay. And then this one will be just thumbnail size. Do I have everything I need? So I have the thumbnail image URL. I have the video ID. This, this is for the video player. And then I have the title and the description. I think this is it. Perfect. And then going back out so this is a single video going back one step this is the playlist okay and the playlist has an items which is an array of those video instances so if I go to playlist let's make sure that this is also decodable and we want items right like that i hope you're enjoying the lesson so far now just in case you want to launch your own app i want to tell you about cwc plus this step-by-step -step program will help you launch your own app even if you don't have any experience and it takes about four months if this sounds like something you're interested in i have a special offer for you i'll leave the link in the description below this video and hopefully I'll see you there. If not, no worries. I really appreciate that you're here watching this lesson and learning with us. So thank you for that. Anyways, now back to the lesson. Right. And let's also, we need to add identifiable, um, which allows us to use an array of this inside the Swift UI list. And we have the ID already for the identifiable protocol because that's what that requires. And I think we're okay now. Let's try to parse it. Let's go into the data service and let's continue parsing the data. So we are going to uh, first create a JSON decoder. And then we're gonna say decoder dot decode a certain type from. So we're gonna decode the data from here and we are going to decode it into a uh, an instance of playlist so we're passing in the playlist as a type and so we have to add dot self this is how you specify a type oh I forgot to point out that this decode method can throw errors and so it's asking you to do try so we can put the try right here since it's already in a do block that's perfect we don't have to do another one unless you want to specifically um, 
handle that error versus this error. I'm sure you can differentiate in here though when you catch it. Okay, so let's capture the result of this decoding. So let playlist equals that. And then as you know, our playlist instance has items, which are the videos. And this is what we are going to try to return. Right? Because remember this method right here returns an array of videos. All right, let's see if this works. Let us go back to our views and double check what we're doing here. All right, so I'm gonna set a breakpoint right here by tapping here, which is gonna pause the execution. Um, you know what, let's not, let's, let's add a little bit more before we run this. Okay, that way we can visually see something in the simulator. Let's use a Swift UI list Okay, and we are going to pass in the videos. And because the video uh, struct is identifiable, then that is all good. That means we can use it in this list. And then we are going to display for each video. Let's just display the snippet title. And if that is nil, just say, just say title. Okay, let me just do that. All right, let's see if we can see anything come up. Oh, it was so fast, <laughs> but we could see the response. Sorry, the request go out, the response comes back with five items. And sure enough, we see five items right here. Now, I expected to see more because our playlist actually has like eight videos or nine videos in here, 10 videos actually. So let me take a look at here. I think by default, yeah, the default value for max results is five. So this is something that you'll want to set as well. Let's change that in our data service. What was that max results capital R? So I'm going to add that right here, max results equals 20, let's say. And this, it's telling us that we never checked the response. So we can just ignore that by adding an underscore, like we don't have to name that. All right, let's run it again. It happened so fast there. We have everything. So what we did here today by parsing the JSON through looking at the response and then mapping these key value pairs and creating these properties in our data model, this is something that is very common to do. Uh, so it's best to get familiar with this process if you want to work with different APIs in the future. All right, now that we have the video instances showing up in the feed view, the hard part is done. All we need to do is show the thumbnail images. If you're enjoying this build so far, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you've been following along and you are able to parse the JSON data, please comment down below saying JSON is no match for me. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.